So the big lead had four destinations for one of our favorite names that we've heard 80 billion times is John Collins. Because look, oh, man. I thought you were going to say Bradley Beal for some reason. Oh, yeah. Well, sure. That makes sense as well. But John Collins, has, the Hawks have been a dumpster fire. They yeah. they really have. After killing us on opening night and looking great, they yeah. have really struggled. Absolutely. Now, this trade, I'm, I'm doing in a heartbeat. All right. And I know it's that answer is probably going to drive some people insane. But they said if the Hawks are just really looking to tear it down and rebuild around Trey Young, or they just think they need a different combination, the exchange of Hardaway and Brunson would work in terms of going for John Collins. Like I it doesn't say anything about draft compensation. I'm not ruling out yeah. any like draft compensation, but John Collins. He's a 17 and eight guy who's very efficient and is he's not a huge like three point shooter, but yeah. when he does shoot, he's he's solid. And I'm not a, he gets hurt a lot too. He does. Uh, now here's the deal, Corey. Those two guys starting next year, Brunson and Hardaway will combine to make over forty million dollars a year. That's the tough. Oh yeah, thing. did you see Kevin Gray's tweet while uh, who they play? And he was talking to a Knicks guy. And he was like, he was Brunson's like, going to get paid. Brunson is getting paid. Right, he's going to get somewhere between probably 20 and 22 million a year, yep. Yep. Um, which is a lot of money. But that's it. Hey, if Hardaway Jr. gets 20 million a year, yep. Brunson's going to get 20 million a year. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can disagree with how much you, you, you say, well, he's not worth that. You know, Hardaway's probably not a $20 million player in this league either. But when you hit free agency and teams have money, that's what you get. Brunson's going to get 20 million a year at least. And, I would do the trade just based off of that. Okay. If that makes sense. I believe John Collins is about 27, yeah. 25. And he's a little bit overpaid too because he got to the marker where time to overpay players. But would you rather have Hardaway and Brunson at, let's just say, $43 million a year I'll, or have John Collins at 27 and have the other $15 million to hopefully send another direction? The other part, and I, I agree with Kevin, I'll take my chances there. I, I love Brunson. The to find the production that he's giving you is difficult, though, right? Like that's that's the one thing that you have to. Oh, sure. You really do have to put some trust now in Nico and that group in the in the off season. We are actually using whatever we have in the draft to get a developmental player that we can turn into Brunson. I know like those guys do it themselves, but you got to be able to have those kinds of things come into your system if you want to keep if you want to advance I for think. sure like no part of this is like Brunson is a bum who's going to be overpaid so let's get him out of there I like I don't think that whatsoever I'm just saying whenever you were going to make this deal work even if the Hawks do want to tear it down you got to give up something good to be able to make this deal and if I, I would wonder if they would like the combination of Brunson and Young doing their thing together because Brunson can run the point a little bit more and maybe open up Young for it even more. It does seem weird for defense. Like, just to give you an example, last night when there was timeouts, they would take Brunson out of the game yeah. because he is shorter and it struggles on... They kept switching, right? They wanted uh, Wagner, Wagner, however you want to say yeah. it, from Michigan. <laughs> they wanted... that. He's a great rookie, right? He's He's top three rookie in the NBA this year. And they wanted switches. And they're like, what a great deal if we can get this six foot ten dude uh, being guarded by a six foot two dude. And so the Mavericks were like, we got to put in Josh Green here to finish because we can do more switches. And with Brunson, we're limited. I just, if I'm the Atlanta Hawks, I go, dude, how in the heck are we going to play defense with Brunson and Young on the court 20 plus minutes a night together? That That is an interesting point, but you move forward with this deal. Assuming the draft compensation wouldn't be like are you, anything noteworthy. Are you saying the, the Brad Beal deal is dead then, Kevin? Is that what you're saying? Because Mike brought it up and I'm like, is that what you're suggesting? I would have to go back to the table because that's a different level of deal. Look, I, I he's like... He's out for the next two games with a wrist injury. That's so fine. I'll Maybe we can get him... As far as we know, he's not on the market. Okay, That's fine. the tough thing. All right. All right. John Collins is. Yeah. Yes, I'll move, I'll move on this deal if the Brad Beal deal is over. Do you think... I, I had the statement Friday. Do you think the Mavs make a trade by Fe February 10th? Not one of no significant. Like, yeah, I, I think they'll make a deal like that's get like JJ Redick again. Yeah. And it was like, oh, we bought this guy out or we swap second round pick rights or whatever. We got Drogic for nothing. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be a, you know, that is interesting because 
I think that would be trading Brunson. If you feel like Dragic is coming here in a couple of weeks, that and, would help. Yeah. And if I told, because that kind of changed your perception, right? If I told you then essentially, and I realized that this is not how the deal would work, but in terms of what would come to the team, you're trading Hardaway Jr. and Brunson for Collins and Dragic. Then you're like, okay, that is a lot more acceptable. And so I do not, I do not believe that the Mavericks are going to make a trade that you're going to be like, okay. 